Hello everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithkey. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show, the online show that aims to encourage educators to enhance digital creativity in all curriculum areas and levels. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's just joined us live for this show being recorded on Wednesday, the 17th of November, 2021, via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group. We encourage you to say hi in the chat and let us know where you are from and where you teach. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we would like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. During this episode, we'll be hearing from Western Australian Adobe Education Leader, Ali Blackwell. Adobe Education Leader, Mark Christie from the Northern Territory Department of Education will also be joining us. Clara Galan, the head of Adobe's Global Education Community Programs will be with us. We will be sharing some of the results of this week's Adobe Creativity Challenge with Victorian students. We'll be promoting a number of Adobe-related education resources, including the new Adobe in a Box series with the Khan Academy. And our behind-the-scenes guru, Adobe Customer Success Manager Jerry Wong, will share, have a special quiz question for us. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, we haven't got that many people live at the moment, Erin, but let's have a look at who has said hello. John from Toowoomba, he's a regular with us. Hello, John. Jerry popped up there for a second. Jerry, do you want to come back up again and give us a wave? There he is. <laughs> and hello, so Nullen has joined us as well. So we'll just Nullen. take this down and feature Wonderful. Hello. Which means we're being dominated by Queenslanders at the moment, Erin, your fellow Queenslanders. It's great to have you guys. And if you feel like letting us know where you're from, just go to the chat and let us know. And we'll, we'll bring up comments during the show at different times, but we will have a quick quiz question coming up fairly soon for you. So be ready for that and be ready to see if you can respond to that one as well. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Now let's welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong, who we just welcomed a bit before, but we're going to welcome him again. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I will be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. To encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe-related quiz question for you. What Adobe app was reviewed as the best vector graphics editing program in 2018 by PC Magazine? There you go. Interesting question. And I must admit, I didn't know the answer straight away, but I'll give you a clue for those of you who are watching live, if you want to have a bit of a guess, go to the chat and see if you can respond and we'll bring up your responses if they're correct, that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's directly related to what one of our guests will be presenting today. So that's a bit of a clue for you. Big clue. <laughs> no responses yet, which is interesting, which means no one's done their research to work out what the presentations are. We'll find out a little bit more. Oh dear, no responses at all at this point. Oh, no, we oh, do, we do. There we go. Nolan. Well done, oh, I just hit him. They were bringing back Jinx, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So the answer is illustrated. So, Nolan, you get a round of applause. Well done. 
an official Adobe round of applause for getting that one right. Thank you very much, Nalan. All right, let's move on and uh, let's just hear again from Rob before we continue any further. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Now let's meet our guests for this episode and welcome Clara Galan, Ellie Blackwell and Mark Christie to the stage. Let's bring them all up there. There they are. Look at those wonderful faces. Good morning, everyone. And um, so, Cla <laughs> Clara, welcome back to the show, um, all the way from Barcelona in Spain. And for those of who are watching who haven't met you, can you please tell us a little bit about your role at Adobe? Sure. So good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you um, in Inject Creativity Live. Um, I manage our educator community programs here at Adobe, and I'm based in Barcelona in Spain. Which is why you're saying good morning, I suppose, because the rest of us are thinking good morning. That was several hours ago. <laughs> But for you, the day has only just started. We're, we're coming from the future here, Clara. Clara, so it's great to have you with us. Ellie, tell us about where and what subjects you teach in Perth. Oh, I'm super lucky. I teach a range of arts and technologies. I'm very lucky. The last couple of years, I've, I've got quite a unique stream of uh, senior school. So year 11 and 12 students who are our future designers sort of 16 to 18 year olds. And it's it's been really interesting linking my own thinking and work with where they're at. So yeah, it's great. Excellent. Beautiful. And um, Mark, it's great to have you back on the show as well. So can you tell us Thank a little you. bit more about your work? Well, I'm pretty lucky because uh, uh, I get to, well, promote and, and use Adobe products with 152 schools throughout the Northern Territory and, and uh, try and convince uh, folks um, how to use the tools, which is pretty easy considering how great they are. Mm. Now, Clara, tell us something interesting about yourself that not many people would know. Ooh, um, let's see. Well, I recently moved uh, here to Spain about a year ago. I'm from San Francisco and um, I have two passports, so that's why I'm uh, based, <laughs> based in Spain. My family's Spanish, but as you can tell from my accent, I am American, so born in California. Fabulous, and it looks—it's a beautiful part of the world. There, I'm—I'm I'm deeply envious of of the some of the sights you get to see in the location that you're in. It looks gorgeous. And um, Ali, how about you? Um, what is something interesting about yourself that not many people would know? I was thinking about this a lot today. Um, I think most people know it anyway, but I'm—I've just. A, a huge over committer and I take on so many extra things so at the moment which I love at the moment as well as teaching I'm running an art studio and I'm also doing my PhD just to just add that in with some parenting and but yep, I've got yep. lots really good support so I'm really lucky that I don't do all that on my own that is good fantastic on you, your your calendar must be um, absolutely amazing to look at all of the color coding yes <laughs> All right, let's hear from Mark. Mark, what's something interesting about you that not many people would know about? Uh, well, people do know that I fly a little aeroplane up in the Northern Territory, but what they probably don't know that recently I've taken up floating down the rivers of Melbourne in a uh, blow-up kayak, um, which makes me look like I'm inside an inflatable taco oh. <laughs> sometimes. But we don't have crocodiles down here in Melbourne, so I feel reasonably safe doing it. I would never, never do that in the Northern Territory. Oh, uh, let's see what you did there. And Clara, tell us about what you will be sharing with us this episode. So this Thursday, um, we have our uh, Creativity in the Clouds tour. So I'll be sharing the, the guest speaker that will be uh, joining us this Thursday. And um, some wrap up for the year. Um, and just a big thank you to everyone who's participated in this show and in our community programs. Ellie, what will you be sharing with us? I thought I'd have a closer look at Illustrator and how you can really scaffold introducing the idea of drawing with Vector. Nice. And Mark, what will you be sharing? After I watch what Ellie does, because I'm going to learn about that, <laughs> I'll be sharing a little tip on uh, 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 Spark Page. Well, thank you very much, Clara, Ellie and Mark. We are very much looking forward to hearing from all of you 
very, very soon. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Now, recently, Adobe launched Adobe in a Box with Khan Academy, a project-based series for learners of all ages. In the first module, learners can practice creative thinking and video editing skills while developing and explain a video. They'll get help along the way with tips, guidance, and structured activities from experts at Khan Academy and Adobe. There is also a competition for students titled the Explain a Video Challenge to encourage students to keep to create, I should say, a one to two minute video explaining a concept. This is open to students 13 and over. Prizes include a mobile video production kit, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching with an Adobe content producer. Go to the Adobe Education Exchange and search for Khan to find out more. The following video also provides more information. I have yet to face a, a, a topic that when you view it right, it can't be wondrous, it can't be exciting, it can't be intuitive. Really show yourself in your video. Get excited about it. Take note of the music credit there at the end of that particular clip. Archer Mason is my nephew and I love it when I get to work with some of his music and I've been using some of his music on a number of videos that I've made over the last year or so. He is a teenager near the border of New South Wales and Victoria and a very talented musician and so look him up on YouTube. Politic is the name of his music group and you can look that up his uh, channel on youtube so well done archer and it's quite possible that he's watching this live with his mother who's a teacher up on the border up in wodonga so uh, if you are let's give you a wave and uh, hopefully you're you enjoy the fact that your music was shown to literally thousands of teachers who watch the recording of this over the next 24 hours 48 hours so well done archer we hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. We have over 40,000 teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. Please do promote this program with your colleagues because it's it's a really cool program and you can promote it through adobe.ly slash ACE. The focus is not on Adobe skills, but, import the, but understanding the importance of creativity in education. If you'd like to be guided through level one of this course, Dr. Kitchen and I are running the next Be a Creative Educator course on Monday, the 21st of February, 4 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. I think you'll find it's till 6.30 p.m. We're not going to go oh. that long, Erin. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what a bit of a mystery. Well, anyway, to see the times, <laughs> look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator for more information and share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, let's welcome Clara to the stage all the way from Barcelona in Spain. She heads up the ACE and other education community programs for Adobe. Hola, Clara. Hola, buenos dias. <laughs> nice to see everyone here. And I see a lot of friendly faces in the chat. Um, Juliet, Timothy, um, John, nice to see you. I know um, we'd be in Sydney one time a year, but glad that we can connect online. Clara, we're going to disappear and leave it to you to, uh, to share some words with our audience. Absolutely. Well, it's as I mentioned, it's nice to see everyone. And I'm joining you here this morning uh, from Barcelona, um, leading our educator community programs. And I wanted to give you a sneak peek of some of the content and programming we have coming up on our other live stream show, which is the Adobe Creative Educator live stream show. So this Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, which I know is 
very early um, for New South Wales, um, but we will have your very own Craig Dalmeyer Power joining us as part of our Creativity in the Clouds tour. Now this year, um, we haven't been able to visit a lot of school campuses or conferences. So what we decided to do was have our virtual hot air balloon you can see there's a really fun animation at the beginning of our show, um, touch down in different parts of the world where we're interviewing educators and schools um, to show best practices with Adobe tools and creativity. So um, join us this coming Thursday with Craig, and I know it's very early, um, so not to worry, just like the Inject Creativity Live show, um, you'll be able to access this recording immediately on Adobe for Education YouTube, also on our Facebook page and Twitter. So be sure to catch that recording at any time. And um, we're looking forward to, to having you there. And a big thank you to everyone for all the work that you've been doing um, throughout the course of, of the year from, for our community. We're really looking forward to partnering with you um, throughout the rest of next year too. So Clara, just to confirm, the actual live show will be available on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel like this show, is that right? Absolutely, our YouTube channel, Facebook and Twitter. And uh, it's going live at exactly what time in, do you know the time, Sydney time? So 5.30 a.m. Sydney time. There you go. Oh, well, you know, we're all up. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so uh, 3.30 for three thirty in the morning for Western Australia. There you go, Ali. There's an opportunity. <laughs> Queen Arch is shaking your head at the moment in the green room. But you can watch the recording and it's, it'll be terrific. So if we go to the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, and Jerry, if you've got that banner there handy, that would be great. I'm not sure if you've got the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. I'm putting him on the spot. But of course, it's the same channel that we broadcast this, so it's very familiar to our audience. And look out for a special New South Wales version. Clara, thank you so much. I'm just going to bring Erin up to the stage. She's going to give you a little thank you. Yeah, so thanks, Clara. It's always great to have you on the show. And this is the last time that you'll having you have you appearing this year. So have a great Christmas break. Buenas tardes. And thank you so much for all the work you do for the Adobe and Education Community Programs internationally. Thank you so much for having me today and have a great holiday season, everyone. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Thanks, Rob. Well, Erin, another Adobe Max has been done and dusted. And what an event it was. That's right, Tim. Running free and virtual again throughout various global time zones with over 400 sessions from hundreds of inspiring speakers, Adobe Max 2021 was an outstanding event. If you missed it live, don't worry. The sessions will remain available on the max.adobe.com site for many months to come. And to find the education-related sessions from this year's event, check out max.adobe.com forward slash sessions forward slash educators. These will include sessions from local Adobe education leaders from Australia, Juliet Bentley, who's with us live at the moment, and Craig Delmeyer Power too. First time we've ever actually had local Adobe education leaders presenting at Adobe Max. And speaking of AELs, we're about to hear from Ali Blackwell from WA. Hi folks, we are about to be inspired by an AEL, an Adobe Education Leader. AELs are passionate about the use of Adobe tools to inspire creative learning and teaching experiences in the delivery of either primary, secondary or post-secondary curricula. The first step to becoming an AEL is to be an ACE, an Adobe Creative Educator, via edX.adobe.com slash adobe-creative-educator. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an ACE, just a teacher interested in engaging students through creative digital learning experiences. The ACE program is a free international micro-credentialing program. It only takes a few hours to earn your level one badge and the focus is on creativity rather than Adobe. Please share this program with your colleagues and get involved. Who knows, you may one day also become an Adobe education leader. Well, it is a delight to welcome Adobe Education Leader, Ali Blackwell, to the show. Over to you, Ali. 
I'll get you to unmute there, Ellie. Apologies. There we go. <laughs> okay, so today I thought uh, we would have a look at ways that you can scaffold um, students into vector drawing. And sometimes parts of Illustrator can be a little bit intimidating, particularly for our younger students. So I thought I'd start off uh, with a few really simple open-ended activities. So, uh, and of course, I just want to acknowledge at the beginning of this, I did not create all of these. As part of a teacher in a very collaborative space, locally um, and globally, I, I'm really appreciative of all of the, um, the work and the thought that goes into this space by many, many people. So I'm not claiming that these are mine, but more the ways that we can draw on these ideas to just slowly chunk scaffold and build those skills so the very first point i'm going to talk about today is red cherry um, it's simply really in interestingly a red box and the word cherry and uh, my first lesson often with illustrator is to give students this prompt and give them one class to just play just free play experiment which tools look familiar can you change this shape um, Sometimes it can go into the obvious, I'm going to make that look like a cherry. Why is this not red? Can I move things around? Um, but really it's an opportunity to just break it, to, to, to just play. So I really like to see uh, my students, um, and often I learn things in the, on, in the tools and various things that I don't even know. So Red Cherry is a fantastic place to start. This came from a book. Um, I can definitely post the link up later on. It's about ideation and uh, where you can come up with ideas. You know, there's more open-ended things. The next one I wanted to show you was um, what I call reassembling. So basically I, I give my students some kind of vector. This is one that I found on a free vector site online. It can be any theme. It can be, um, you could even try, you know, send your students off to go and source something. But this is just a, a bunch of monsters that are created from various shapes. And if you zoom in, you can see um, that they, they're overlapping and they're layered in various ways. So they're really simple. But the best part is that you're giving students a choice and you're not expecting them to jump in and, and uh, come up with something from scratch. So I've kind of scaffolded this with um, artboards. The first one is about just copying it. So I might just grab this one here. I can hold Alt or Option and drag him onto the second page or copy and paste because as in with a lot of Adobe products, there's multiple ways of doing things and you might find one that's far better than what I do. Then it's about, I think, one of the most crucial parts of um, Illustrator and InDesign um, and it's understanding the way that the different selection tools work. So being able to move around the space and select different parts and also select sections, so directly choosing the anchors and understanding and, and basically just pulling this apart. I like to often think of this as, as kind of like Mr Potato or, um, you know, all those sorts, kinds of things where you you're pulling apart in sections and then you've got to make a decision about how these things can be reassembled and put back, put back together so the third um art board is a blank space and i ask the students to then group or ungroup or take sections of these copy them over to the next one and then reassemble so it's it's an activity that's about uh using an existing vector drawing to understand ways that things can be constructed, to understand how these things are layered um, and putting them together. But it's also a really good way of saying creativity is not necessarily looking at a blank white page or a screen and then just coming up with a magical idea, that it could be that you're going to put these things together in a really new and fascinating way. So here we've got some of the very strange uh, examples that have come out of one of my classes, uh, it's a year nine class last week. And there's different levels that students are at. It's quite a good differentiator because some students may just get, you know, four shapes together and their existing shapes. Um, there are others that are really playing with rotating and mixing and matching different um, parts of different monsters. So I quite enjoy that where this goes, it gives them a chance to be a little bit unique. So that's the sort of second place that I go to. 
it's not necessarily learning how to draw with a pen tool or things that are a bit more complex, but it's a good place to start. Once students understand selections and have had a chance to sort of play, I then take them through a lot of uh, the more complex pen tool um, exercises. So Google pen tool exercises, there are some amazing things that people have created out there. Um, but I think, you know, that they can be quite complex. Um, I often have to relearn and um, remember how to do these. Uh, shortcuts are really crucial and some students can struggle with this. So my other suggestion, one of my favourites, um, is a website, the Bezier game, which I'm told I think I pronounced wrong. It's French, so it obviously has different pronunciation. But this particular um, game for learning to understand the shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts and the thinking for drawing um, with a pen tool and a vector and thinking about the outside shapes is just, it's brilliant. It really is. So I have, I run competitions quite a lot. Um, students are motivated by how far they can get, but it's a fantastic way of actually having um, guidelines underneath that can really show you how you can learn to make various shapes. And it gets really quite complex. Um, and often I'm running around the room talking about holding the alt key, breaking this one to take it up to the top. So you're sending it in the direction you're going, dragging that one down, break the curve. It's a lot of understanding about how anchors work. That one's complex. They get harder and harder. They're really hard. So uh, the Bezier is one of my favourites, although I probably do need to pronounce it properly. Um, then after that, it's back into really applying that um, learning with the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts and the different types of curves and the way that the anchors work to applying it to some of these things. There's lots and lots of them. They're fantastic. So I found myself this week, um, a student has an idea for a project and I was referring to, do you remember how to draw the star? Or do you remember how to draw the, the circle? Or, you know, do use the way, use the same shortcuts or the tools that you use for drawing the car or after that there's a paper clip. So it becomes quite a good um, visual reference as well for, for different ways of drawing. Um, the star is quite straightforward. It's another way of reinforcing, you know, just straight lines and geometry. The um, value of doing this is that this particular file is set up in a very fantastic way uh, with the template underneath. So it's another way of reading the instructions. They're numbered. So some students will go off and do those on their own time. It's a really good way of supporting extension. Um, and then, and that's sort of building up the idea of how to construct shapes um, using vector where it's about the outside shape and the fill. So it's really, it changes the way you think rather than it being a paintbrush, which you can do in Illustrator. Um, I prefer to sort of, to really build up that thought process of, it's, I think it's a quite a different way of drawing. So uh, the next place after this, our pen tool exercises, which are, a standard sort of straightforward exercise. Um, the next place we've got to now is how do you develop your own ideas um, in response to a design brief? So this week we've been looking at, um, I don't know if you've ever heard the My Exquisite Corpse, the way I think it's been done quite a bit at Max and a few other exercises. I've developed a design brief version of that. So um, each aspect of a design brief I roll down. In fact, I should take some photos and show you. They're pretty fantastic. So it'll be everybody choose a number and you roll it down and pass it to somebody else and then you choose a colour. So you end up with a design brief that teaches them how to then apply this kind of drawing skill to a very specific context, which I think is quite a skill. You know, you've got a design for seven-year-olds. It's got to have these two colours. Um, it has to be a logo or an illustration or something using these skills. So that's the stage that I'm at with them at the moment. And it's quite surprising how, you know, if the first time they've used really quite complex software, a lot of these students are coming out and jumping straight in because they've had all this scaffolding and these exercises and this engagement with how to draw with, um, with Illustrator. So it's quite fantastic. Um, 
I'm wondering if anybody's got any questions at this stage. I really think that um, I highly recommend going and Googling pen tool exercises and going to see if you can find uh, some kind of complex vector that you can give to students that they can break and pull apart. I think that's just the reassembling is a disassemble and reassemble is a fantastic way to start. Ali, John um, Bowden from Toowoomba said, I also use this one with my classes, Ali. So he's affirming what you're saying. And uh, we've got uh, Juliet saying, wonderful, Ali. Let's just bring up what she's saying. There we go. So she's enjoying it today. Look, Ali, there's, it's possible that there are some teachers listening to this who really don't know what a vector actually is mm -hmm. um, we hear about that word occasionally but what does it actually mean what's the difference between a vector drawing and say something that you could draw in photoshop when you're just using say the paintbrush or the paint tool? yeah good question so before i sort of jump into these um i, I do a few lessons really distinguishing between pixels and and vector graphics and it can be on lots of different levels. So comparatively file types between the two. And, and so this is also my second task. So before this, I've done a lot of Photoshop work with my students. So they're very, you know, they're, they're becoming quite good with understanding how to work with pixels and they've understood how to export um, different resolutions and they understand that kind of way of thinking. So at this stage, um, just before I jump into Illustrator, um, we talk a bit about the maths the difference, um, the, basically the different way that computers save the information. And it's a really excellent opportunity to uh, develop those cross-curricular links and talk about, um, you know, grids and uh, anchors um, and how those kinds of, it's basically the way that a, that a computer stores the information. But the advantage with a vector, rather than being formed by pixels, and we talk about, you know, have you ever seen a drawing that, a photo or something that when you've zoomed in or you've looked at it, it actually is quite blurry and pixelated. And we talk about those experiences, but a vector solves that. But it also, it has a particular style as well, a particular um, way of using color. And we look at a lot of illustrators and circumstances where vectors are ideal and character design, um, logos, um, you know, graphic novels, they, they're really brilliant and suited to those kind of purposes, but it's the quality. It's that, it's that high quality um, graphic that you can get with a vector that's just excellent. I often say that uh, a vector diagram is it's like a, it's drawing with the mathematical algorithms which change as you scale your drawing up and down. So you're always going to get a perfect quality of your drawing. So you can then scale your artwork as big as a billboard on the side of a road, or it could be a tiny little object that you're going to use for an animation later on. You've got that functionality when you're Absolutely. working with that. And I guess that's the way that we, we sort of structure the whole course. You start with pixels and it's 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 an easier concept to comprehend. And we, we do things like make pixel art and, you know, you draw manually on grids and you can understand that. And then you scaffold into to vector and then you take those vectors and you start to look at time based and, you know, where where you can take vector it's really quite exciting when you start to go into xd and after effects and all the other places that you can take that so yeah it's part of a really awesome process really impressed with the work there ali is there anything else you wanted to not really at this stage um i just think really worth exploring a lot of the the vector art that's out there i have a few things of my own but i think it's great to give students a choice this kind of thing is a really, really ideal way to sort of engage and hook them in. And of course, we recently launched Illustrator for the browser version of Illustrator. We launched that at Adobe Max. Obviously, we mentioned it, it'll be coming out next year. And last year, we launched the iPad version of Illustrator. So there's lots of different ways now of mm. building vector diagrams and drawings without needing necessarily to go to the full desktop version of Illustrator. But everything just comes back to that. And that seems to be the tool of choice for many graphic designers around the world. Absolutely. It's my favourite. <laughs> All right. Bringing Erin up to the screen. How was how that, Erin? 
It was good. I was um, furiously taking notes and then like find, grabbing the um, the uh, URL for that uh, lovely uh, Bezier method. I probably said it wrong too, Ali. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll just pop it into the chat here for people who are interested. And yeah, it's something I've definitely been um, trying to build my skills in and explore. And it was so nice to to watch you move around so confidently in that space. Thank you so much. Thank you. What well on, Ali. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Now, Erin, last week we ran the first of a series of live and online professional learning and networking opportunities from Adobe called Adobe Teach Meets. <gasps> and I was so busy that I was <laughs> my busy. place. I was. Oh. I actually put together a video that explains what these Teach Meets are all about. Let's have a look at it. The Adobe Teach Meets program is a set of free and online creative professional learning opportunities for teachers in any subject area and any level who have access to Adobe applications. Each Teach Meet session involves a choice of online practical workshops, both for teachers who are new to Adobe and those who are experienced users. Each workshop is led by an Adobe education leader who is a practicing classroom, primary, secondary or higher education teacher, or they're led by members of the Adobe education team. All of these leaders are passionate about enhancing students' digital literacy, communication and creativity skills. Each Teach Meet session will run for two consecutive afternoon evenings, twice a term throughout 2022, starting at 4 p.m. Melbourne, Sydney time. The sessions are not recorded. They are live workshops with links to key practical resources and how-to guides for follow-up. Registration in advance is required. Any teacher who has access to Adobe tools will benefit from the Adobe Teach Meets program. So look up adobe.ly slash teach meets or scan this QR code to find out more and register for the sessions you would like to attend. Let all your colleagues know about this free online and creative professional learning opportunity from Adobe. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, let's welcome Mark Christie to the stage. Now, Mark, we're Hello, looking Tim. forward to hearing about a creative way you are working with Adobe Spark page. So the stage is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm just going to click on send to put a little link in the chat. So I had to do a presentation uh, to one of our schools, Darwin High School, the other day about Adobe Spark page, which is fantastic for creating journals, assignments, resources, and newsletters. So a lot of our schools are using Spark page for uh, newsletters. Uh, but one of the things that was a bit of a, a shortcoming was the ability to create a table of contents. And I didn't think that you could actually do it in Adobe Spark page, but you can. And this little video I'm going to share now, uh, which I'm just going to hit play, will explain how to do it. And then I can jump back in and actually show you the Spark page, which I've just put into the chat. So you can actually do that yourself. So here we go. Should there be audio at that point, Mark? Oh, no audio? No audio. No, we're not hearing anything unless it's just from me. I'll just bring Erin up just to confirm. No, we... but um, the audio looks like it's turned on on your system. Um, we're not sharing the screen at the moment, though, so let's just pop it back up and see what we can hear. No, nope, she's up. gone. She's gone quiet. Maybe if we just quickly reshare the screen, that might do the trick. We'll turn it off and on again. Right. So, oops. Stop screen. It was working beautifully when we it rehearsed. Was. It always works course. beautifully in rehearsal. And it's and it's probably because I've switched to the uh, the headphones actually. Yeah, yeah. changing one oh. thing. It's like it was. Yes. Yeah. So we'll just try. Sorry, what's happened here? Yeah. Well. 
Well, we'll tap dance a little while while um we were rehearsing. Uh, Mark was sharing with us, and the audio is is really good. He's talking through his project and make sure it's just cool. audio. I've yeah. uh, noticed. I'll just bring up the screen again. There, Mark. We'll give it another test. At the end of the spark. There we go. We've got Hooray. it now. Technical yeah. problem solved. Teamwork makes the dream work. Back over to you, Mark. Thank you. Here, which will jump me back up to the table of contents. So how do we do that? Importantly, you have to create your uh, page with headings using the heading one or heading two. So whatever you want to jump to has to be a heading one or heading two style. And when that happens, when you do that across on the left hand side here when you hover, you get a little copy anchor link. So what I'm going to do is find the side journey link. And I did I created that as a heading level two. I'm just going to scroll down and you can see why it's so much better to have a table of contents when you've got uh, quite a large page. So this is a side journey showing off what glide shows can do. When I move over to the left, I can click to copy the anchor link. And what I can then do is jump back into my Spark page and go and locate where this is. And it's at the top of all of these frogs. I could have just scrolled straight up to the top. And you can see here, all I need to do is highlight, select hyperlink and paste in that hyperlink. And if that's all I need to do, then I can uh, simply republish. And because the link stays the same, all I need to do is just update the link. I'll click on that, takes a little while, got my link. I can actually just jump back to this location and hit enter to refresh my page. And when I scroll down to my contents after it's loaded, let's jump back to where I was. So I'll just go straight up to the table of contents. You can see now I've got my side journey. I've now got my side journey and I can scroll through here. Click on back to top. Character animator. So I've got a table of contents which allows me to jump around this rather large document and at any stage go back to the top again. And of course, what I've done is created, copied the link here for contents and then for these buttons that I've added in, jumped back to the top. And that's all there is to it. Right. And I'm just putting the video in there and I can uh, stop share. Oh, actually, no, I can continue sharing because if I just jump into. Uh, so this is the actual um, presentation that I had. Oh, oh I should turn that off. <laughs> Another video played. So um, uh, by creating that table of contents, that really allows whether it's uh, a, a newsletter or or a, a resource material um, piece of resource material to uh, be greater and more powerful than uh, than your typical Spark page, which I think is fantastic. And I'll put that video in there along with the link to the Spark page uh, itself, which, as you might have guessed, was uh, all about Adobe. That's great, Mark, And because so often our Spark pages, because they're only one page, they can get rather long. So to be able to navigate through different sections, that's so cool. I guess the trick is to make sure that you've got heading twos or heading ones, isn't it? There are a couple of, there are a couple of things, actually, and, and one of them was uh, you may note that when you're in the editing mode, if you hit present, so we haven't actually published, um, when you hit present, you can actually still get these links, uh, but unfortunately, they're not the correct links. You do need to fully publish the link. So I can move my mouse off to the side here and in present mode, when I copy this link, it's not correct. Okay. The other thing, the other trap or trick for, for people to consider is that 
Um, if I change the words here, if I change this from royalty-free images to something else and, um, uh, and not republish, what happens is I need to actually get that link again because the links it creates are dependent upon the actual words in that, uh, in that heading. Now, if that's um, a little bit hard to remember because I had some problems with it, in the Spark link that I've actually provided, there's actually a section on, right down the bottom there, creating anchors within a Spark page where the six or seven things you need to do are in there, along with um, the the few things that uh, that you should watch out for. So um, they're all there. Good on you, Mark. That's terrific. And of course, if you weren't able to get access to that link in the chat, Mark's going to join us at our fireside chat at the end of this live broadcast. So you can join us on that on Blue Jeans, and we'll promote that in a couple of minutes. And then you can have a direct talk with Mark and get access to any resources that he has for you. Mark, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Aaron Raifke. Oh, bit of a stumble there. Thanks, Rob, for stumbling. We have had uh, a couple of special announcements for New South Wales and Victorian teachers about some opportunities for your students in 2022. Throughout 2022, Adobe is running a series of Adobe Creativity Challenges for New South Wales and Victorian students in years five to nine. Adobe Creativity Challenges are all about students working with a team to design and share a digital solution based on a brief from an organisation or a global problem. Find out more via adobe.ly forward slash challenges dash year 529. That's YR 529. The digital solutions are made with Adobe's amazing creativity tools and are usually a short video, a mobile app design or a web page. This is a great way for students to learn Adobe tools and develop a range of important collaboration, digital literacy, communication, problem solving and creativity skills. Erin, earlier today, I had the pleasure of showcasing the submissions from the most recent Adobe Creativity Challenge that involved 400 students who had registered for this event from 10 different schools. And so this challenge was to promote good hand hygiene using either a video, a poster or a web page solution. Then here is one of the videos that was showcased by students from Rivercrest Christian College. Washing hands is the best way to keep germs and viruses alive. Use soap when washing and wash both hands together. Do you want to be clean? Yes. 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 If you want to be clean, just follow these steps. One, two, three, let's go. Rub your palms together, scrub it. Between your fingers, rub both thumbs and clean them. Oh, 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 oh. Rub both palms together, scrub it. Between your fingers, rub both thumbs and clean them. Oh, 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 oh. Make sure you wash your hands to ensure that you stay safe and stay healthy. Bye! Bye. You soap when washing. Well done, Rivercrest Christian College, who submitted actually a total of eight entries for this morning's showcase. And I'll be sharing more about this in my journal via timkitchen.net in the very near future. Victorian and New South Wales students in years 9 to 12, as well as any teacher from anywhere, are invited to register for a special two-and-a-half-day Adobe Premiere Pro workshop during the Easter holidays. Erin, this is a great opportunity to spend quality time learning a quality application. This is a free and online intensive workshop that will also involve a showcase and the chance for three lucky students to win one of two iPads and Apple pencils, as well as a pocket gimbal camera. So look up adobe.ly slash video dash workshop 22 to find out more about the Adobe Holiday Video Challenge Workshop. Which is being run by Dr. Tim Kitchen from Adobe and will be held from April 11 to 14 during the Easter holidays. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. 
If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via www.facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education and the wider community. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will be on Wednesday the 1st of December at 6.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Our AEL presenter will be Adobe Education Leader Ross Johnson from New South Wales. We'll be meeting Manuela France. Oh, I knew I was going to get that wrong. Frances Chini, Francis Chini, Francis Chini. I think I've got that right, but we'll be meeting we'll, her. We'll, we'll get it right on the night, Tim. I hope so, good, because <laughs> she's a, now a member of our team and she's an academic and a former international journalist and the most recent addition to the Adobe Education team. For those watching the recording of this episode, please join us live if you can in the future. It's always much more fun and interactive when you are live. For those watching live, get ready to move to bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen.adobe for our brief fireside chat and we will see you all at the next episode special thank you to jerry and erin for helping to put this show together and a special thank you to ali clara and mark for their contributions to this episode see you all next time well let's make sure because i always miss this don't i'm trying to find the ending video here it is here's rob the robot to close the show for us well folks thank you so much for watching this episode of inject creativity live for those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Rathke, don't forget to keep being creative.